I think, I think we're good. My neighbour's children have been screaming for the past half hour. It's been lovely and great and I haven't been able to start this video, so let's just... Yeah, we're good. Okay, right, action. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lindsay, if you don't know who I am, and I'm an illustrator type art person and I make illustrator type art videos. <laughs> One day I'll get better at introducing this, I promise. A few of you guys have seemed interested in how I got to where I am today, so I thought I would sit down and kind of let you know how I did it. Um, but first, I think I need a coffee because I am not ready to film this video. <laughs> Fucking cute my mug is. <laughs> I got it for my Christmas, it's from Kath Kidson and it's the cutest thing I own, besides myself. Right, so let's start at the very beginning. What's that from? Is it from the Sound of Music? I think it might be from the Sound of Music. Anyway, let's start at the very beginning. Some of you might know that I went to Duncan of Jordan Stim, um, College of Art and Design, or DJ CAD for short, which is the art school in Dundee, in Scotland, in the UK, in Europe in Earth. Maybe not in Europe. That's a whole other thing. Anyway, and um, there I studied illustration. I did a general foundation course for a year and then did my final three years doing illustration. So at the end of your kind of time at Duncan and Jordanson, everybody does a degree show. So this is kind of where everything started for me. So for my degree show, like kind of final projects, I did two kind of main things which kind of led me on to where I am today. So the first thing was I did a series of pencil drawings that were based on Peter Pan. And for that, I did kind of scenic drawings where I picked like three scenes from um, the book. And then I also did portraits of characters from the book as well. But I kind of chose celebrities to base them on and then kind of Peter Panned them. This was basically how I learned how to do pencil drawings. I've always kind of known how to do portraits like through paintings and stuff like that. But the pencil drawing, it kind of amplified everything and I knew I was kind of good at it. My second project was a kind of Art Nouveau poster inspired project. So a lot of you guys will have seen like Art Nouveau posters. A lot of people have them up in their house, like the kind of hot chocolate ones or the ones that are like absinthe, 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 absinthe. Anyway, so I've always really, really loved that style. So what I kind of did was chose a few celebrities and things that were kind of going on at the time and kind of made them into a story, but through an Art Nouveau poster. So a few things that were happening at the time, this is gonna age me. <laughs> Miley Cyrus, when she was at the VMAs and she came out and was like twerking up against Robin Thicke. That happened. Alex Turner dropping his mic at the end of the Brits. I think it was the Brits, I can't really remember. Invoice me for the microphone if you need to. And Kanye West's interview with Zane Lowe, where he was basically like, Versace, 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 and it kind of went viral. We love Versace! Versace, 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 Versace! We love Versace! So those were the three things that I chose, and then I kind of made Art Nouveau posters out of them. From that, I then had sock left because I bought loads of stuff and it didn't all sell at Degree Show. So once I graduated, I set up an Etsy shop, and those were the things that I was selling. So the Alex Turner, Miley Cyrus, Kanye West, and then all of the portraits that I'd done. Um, they weren't the originals, they were just kind of like scanned versions. I had my little Etsy shop set up. I set up my Classy Bird Facebook page and I kind of started. But obviously this isn't a fairy tale and it didn't magically happen like that. So I basically had to start working in a restaurant once I'd finished uni. Um, the hospitality industry, as most of us know very well who went to art school, um, so I basically worked there for a while, a while, <laughs> and it was really, really good, but it got kind of all consuming and I was working like almost every day and I didn't really have any spare time to do anything. I was doing a few projects on the side, so I knew I wanted to start doing my pencil drawings and maybe folk could buy them for like portraits, but to do that, you've got to kind of have examples. So this is why one tip if you ever want to go freelance, you can't just expect the stuff to be rolling in. I basically did a portrait of my sister's son, my nephew, and put that out on Facebook and was like, portraits, here you go. And I had to spend ages doing this drawing and I gave it to my sister for free, obviously. I needed an example to get out there. So a few people got back to me and I was doing like pencil drawings on the side and I was doing some paintings. 
But the restaurant was basically just taking over my life and I was just dreaming about where knives and forks were and having a little flashback, I'm so sorry. So it was getting a little bit all consuming, so I knew I kind of had to change it up. I knew I needed to quit because I was just, I was being offered manager's position. And it was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I cannot do this. So yeah, I then, then I quit. And everybody at the time was like, Lindsay, what are you doing? This is such a stupid decision because I was making quite good money and I was in kind of a high up position. But I was just like, no, I didn't go to art school for four years to then work in a restaurant, which works for some people. And some people love working in hospitality. And if you do that, then fair play to you, on you go. You get free food. Yes, it wasn't for me. So I then started working in a cafe. <laughs> but the cafe was like a diff, it was just a different place. It was filled with more like creative people and I was working less hours. So I was able to spend more time on drawings and commissions. Whilst working at the cafe, I got myself a graphics tablet um, and that basically changed everything for me. I had obviously dabbled in digital artwork at uni, like kind of the posters that you saw, but it was more me drawing it and then scanning it and coloring it on the computer. Whereas on a graphics tablet I was like I could do anything I can literally do anything I want but the problem was I was shite <laughs> basically I was no good at it like at all but I spent a long time trying to like hone my craft of graphic tabletness but it was so frustrating because I could kind of do portraits like painting and like pencil drawings and not being able to do it on the graphics tablet was so frustrating so I released a kind of second bunch of posters for Etsy that were kind of more stylized photographs but I used kind of like dot work patterns which is what I kind of used in my Art Nouveau stuff because I knew how to do that but it still wasn't what I wanted to do and I couldn't get it quite right. So the next three that I released were Shia LaBeouf, Keith Lemon and Mary Berry and then I put them up on my Etsy and then people started to kind of react to them and started to buy them. I was like oh my god this is amazing and um, so obviously I was still working at the cafe had my little Etsy shop kind of in the background, not like, I'm talking like two sales a month here. But at the time I was like, yes, amazing, people are buying my stuff. But because I wasn't working at the cafe as much as I worked at the restaurant, I could still just spend time drawing and drawing and drawing on the computer. And that's what I would fill my evenings with, just sitting down and be like, right, I need to like somehow be amazing. And I would just get so upset with myself, I couldn't do it. And then I basically sat down one day and I was like, I'm going to draw Jon Snow and I'm just going to draw him the way I want to, to draw. I don't know how to explain it, but I had this vision in my head and then somehow after hours and hours of work, I was able to kind of get what I had in my head onto the computer without tracing, without manipulating photographs. I started with a photograph and then started with a blank page on the side and just drew on the blank page and kind of just I did it. I don't know how to explain it. But you guys will know that if like, you've ever, like if you play guitar, you've been struggling to play a song and then suddenly you're like, oh my God, I can play it. I can play it like without looking at the tab and I can, I don't know. It just kind of happened. Sorry, I'm talking really fast. So then I released a Jon Snow print and I was also able to do a Frenchie from Greece print. They were both done within like two days of each other because I was just like, if I stop, I'll never be able to do this again. So then I quit the cafe because the woman that I worked for was an absolute arsehole. And then I started working at another job, which I really, really enjoyed. And it was more flexible hours. So I could spend much more time doing drawings and stuff. And then I was like, right, I can kind of do a digital drawing now. I should maybe see if folk want commissions. So going back to when I originally started releasing my pencil drawings for commissions. Oh, hello, baby. So I wanted to kind of maybe like focus on couple portraits because I thought that my digital style that I was developing was quite cutesy and I could do it quite quickly. And I was like, maybe it was something that people will buy as like a gift. So I was like, couple portraits, right, I'll start doing that and I had to come up with an example. So I drew my other sister and her boyfriend and their cat and then put that out on Facebook and that kind of got quite a lot of attention really. But I was quite smart with the way I did it. I went into like all the groups like, you know, Face Bay and things like that on Facebook. And I was like, look, this is this thing that I do and sharing it everywhere. And then I started getting a lot of people coming in to me saying like, oh, can you do one of me and like my boyfriend or can you draw my dogs? And then I spent a lot, a lot of time doing that. And so I had my kind of Etsy shop, which was kind of like I was selling a few things. And then but I was also doing my commissions, which was taking up a lot of my time and it was going really, really well. And then all of a sudden we moved to Glasgow. So I was still working with the same company that I was working with in Dundee, but I was 
kind of in Glasgow and I also worked with them in Edinburgh for a while and I also worked with them in Stirling for a while and I spent a lot of time in my car. But whilst working with them, again, my hours were still quite flexible and then I sat down and I was like, right, I'm managing with commissions and like the kind of wage that I was getting at my other job, but it was just a constant juggle, like I wasn't getting enough from either. So I was like, right, I need to kind of focus on my Etsy shop a bit more and try and get more of a steadier income from that. So I was like, right, I'm gonna sit down and have a proper think about what I would want to buy if I was on Etsy. So at the time I had a think and I started to release my drag race stuff, which is kind of when everything changed. So I started releasing these drawings and people were starting to react to them. And I wasn't just releasing them as prints like I had been in the past. I started releasing them on t-shirts and on tote bags and people started to buy them. I think I am very, very lucky that I started releasing stuff at the kind of like the rise of like Drag Race and the popularity of it. But it was also the fact that I chose to change, to try and sell stuff that I would buy if I saw stuff on Etsy. And I think that's a really, really good tip if you were to take this as a tip. Try and sell something that you'd buy. Don't just try and make stuff and be like, oh, I'm quite good at this. I'll maybe see if folk buy it. If you wouldn't buy it yourself, the chances are slim that someone else would buy it. So aside from Drag Race, like I feckin love Louis Theroux. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna release a Louis Theroux print in the similar style as my Drag Race stuff, test the waters to see if people like it. And they did. So I kind of continued with that, starting to release more and more kind of character designs of people that I like, kind of alternative celebrities and put them out on Etsy and people started to buy them. And everything did start to change. And then I realized basically in Christmas time of 2017, that I was earning more money on Etsy than I was at my normal job. This didn't happen, as you can tell, overnight. It did take a long time. But yeah, I don't know, I didn't feel ready, I, I, I suppose. I suppose it's like when people say that when they're having children, it's like, oh, we weren't planning on having children. Uh, we didn't think we were ready, but when we've had our child, it's like, oh, we wouldn't do anything different. It's kind of like that. You never really fully feel ready to go self-employed. And then I just, I just jumped and went for it. It was a bit all over the place and uh, bit hectic for a while and the world seemed like it was on fire but yeah I, I did it and that has been me since Christmas 2017 so yeah whew, I, and then since then I've had a few other things that have came through that also helped me as well. A few of you all know if you watch my kind of vloggy videos that I sell my stuff at SDX Scottish Design Exchange in their branch in Glasgow in Buchanan Galleries and they're basically a non-profit organisation where they have local artists sell their stuff in an actual physical shop rather than like online or anything. And it's in Buchanan Galleries, which is basically the biggest shopping centre right in the city centre of Glasgow. That's got like a massive footfall and people go past it all the time. And it's a brilliant opportunity. And they basically don't take any commission from you. You just have to pay your rent every single month. And the variety of stuff that's in there is so cool. But yeah, they've also been like a massive, massive help. And it's people who maybe wouldn't have found me on Etsy, find me in Buchanan Galleries, and then it's just all really nice and lovely and stuff. So yeah, that's kind of how I have became freelance. I know it's a bit of a higgledy-piggledy thing and it's not something that you could exactly copy. If you want to become freelance, everybody does have their own story. But what I would say is just be fully confident in what you are selling because if you love it and you really, really love it, then someone out there in the world will probably also really, really love it. Um, but yeah, that's... Oh my God, a butterfly just flew into the window. It's the springtime. So yeah, that is my story of how I went freelance. If you would want me to sit down and kind of do like a kind of 10 tips for becoming freelance, I could maybe do that that one time um, but I thought I would just sit there and kind of tell you my story just now so anyway thank you so much for watching I know it's been a little bit of a different video um, I feel like I say that at the end of every other video that I do um, but yeah thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy and I'll see you in another video soon bye